Are you comfortable with the size of the city of Atlanta City Council? Am I comfortable with the size? Yes. Uh, I don't think it needs to be as large as it is today. We um, have the largest city council, if I remember correctly, we have the largest city council in the state. That's true. I can't change that today, nor, there, nor can any of us. But it may be able to be done more efficiently. But you think you'd be interested in taking a look? Yes, sir. How that's done. Mm -hmm. City currently operates under um, a um, committee system involving the council. Do you intend to keep that system in place, or do you have any ideas about modifying it in some way? The council committees? Yes. Uh, I, having worked on the legislative side of the House and worked through that committee structure, I actually like it a lot and think it works really well. Uh, before I was president some years back, there were more committees and they were consolidated uh, over the last 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, maybe the last 15 years. So I am comfortable with the committees that are there, having worked on that side of the house, having appointed uh, folks to chair those committees and participate on those committees. We used a rubric of folks' expertise, their interest, and their desire uh, to participate on the different committees uh, on the council side of the house. Um, the bureaucracy of government determines really how effectively the government operates. Uh, most people don't like the bureaucracy. They complain about it. Most of your calls now probably have to do with something that the bureaucracy's not done or done in a way that a citizen un is unhappy with. Um, do you have any ideas at the moment in terms of what you might do to provide for the bureaucracy to operate in a way that the public seems to be happier with it? You have um, had to deal with a lot of change to the bureaucracy over a fairly short period of time. I believe at last count the city has had some seven finance commissioners in about seven years. Um, most people would believe that to be kind of difficult to deal with, be it business, government, or any organization, really. Do you have any ideas at the moment, uh, in the event you um, are successful with your election, how you will go about staffing the bureaucracy and what you will do to uh, attempt to lessen the uh, uh, turnover and change that seems to take place there? Sure, thank you for that question. Uh, we have an exceptional CFO right now. You mentioned we had seven in seven years and you were probably close to, to accurate. Uh, the city is a dynamic behemoth. Uh, it is much, has many more tentacles than most businesses would dare to have. And so having worked in the private sector, I think, gives me an advantage over most, having watched businesses work through silos, businesses that are very well integrated, worked on companies where we had roll-up strategies and bought several businesses and brought them together. Uh, I think articulating a clear vision of where we're going and what our priorities are and communicating those on a regular basis would be very helpful. Uh, we had crisis management when Mayor Franklin came in, and we've got a little bit of that now. She inherited $82 million worth of debt uh, and a two consent decrees that we've talked about. And so she was playing a whole lot of defense, and we're playing a little bit of defense now based on the uh, economic environment in which we find ourselves. But what I also think we are doing is finding that we are agreeing a whole lot more than we are disagreeing about what our priorities are in the city making sure that our financial house is stable, making sure that our public safety staff are um, in place and have all the adequate resources that they need, and articulating on a regular basis that we are in the business of serving people every day and creating that culture at City Hall. When you look at the size of the city, of the staff, we have actually changed dramatically from when Mayor Franklin came in in 2002. We were about 21% larger than the same a city of our same size. Today, we are about 13% smaller than the average city our size. The same is true for spending on municipal services. 
we were much higher than we should have been, and now we are much lower. And all of this data comes from Bain and Company, who did the work. Uh, they are obviously an objective consulting house on the outside of the city. But I think setting the right priorities, setting the right vision, and communicating that not only to the staff at City Hall, but to the citizens of the city, we need to give a more transparent window, I think, so folks understand where they're investing, why they're investing, and what they're getting for the dollars that they pay every year in their taxes. The... Um City over time has um, moved when the opportunity presented itself to enthusiastically and willingly move services to other governments, especially if those services cost money. I'm talking specifically about library services, for example, that used to be largely city. Sure. Uh, the tax assessment process. Um, the next mayor, I'm satisfied, is going to have to deal uh, with um, considerable pressure about some of the services the city operates that generate a lot of revenue, like the airport. Um, it is my guess that the next mayor will have to deal with the idea that the state will be of the mind that that airport should be state operated. What would you do to ensure that since Atlanta built it, it's belonged to Atlanta, that it stays with Atlanta? You know, I will have to lie down on those tracks. Nobody's taking this airport from Atlanta. Uh, the state has never operated an airport. Our, operated, our, our airport is the economic engine for the southeastern part of the United States. And I remember it like this. My son asked me recently, what's the deal with the airport? And I said, what happens at the airport stays at the airport. We don't take money out of the airport to operate the city. No one's going to take money out of that airport to operate the state. If the state boys want to get their house in order, then they need to get busy and get done with that. But they need not reach down in the city of Atlanta and in our airport to do that. Uh, I will protect that airport at all costs, and I will use the bully pulpit of the mayor's office to articulate every single day, if I have to, why it belongs where it belongs, how we're operating it, and how well it is in fact doing. Oftentimes, we hear folks levy allegations against the airport, and those are done in a vacuum because there's no response back, or it's, perhaps it's not loud enough. Um, they tell me I have a sweet face but a velvet hammer. And so I intend to use it to ensure that everyone is clear and listening that this is Atlanta's airport. Period. End of discussion. Um, in the event, uh, one more question about the airport. Yes, sir. In the event the um, airlines uh, collectively get to the mind that they would prefer it be operated by the state, do you have any idea how you might deal with that? Can we go get some more airlines? <laughs> uh, here's what I would say. We are very fond of our airline partners uh, at the airport. It was, however, pointed out to me the other day that we have no international airlines coming into Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. So I think the airport is such a precious resource and asset to us that we must be vigilant about how we run it and about what we do with it on a regular basis. So. I will be deeply involved. We have a general manager at the airport. We will always have a general manager. You need a dedicated resource managing. It is almost a city unto itself. It is so large and so complex. Um, but I think, again, we're just going to push back on the state and say this is just inappropriate, and we will continue to reach out to other airlines or other partners as is deemed appropriate, given the dynamics of the environment in which we find ourselves. <laughs> 